Well, hello, Larry. Hello, Larry. You talk to people all day for a living. Hello, Larry. But all those easy answers you are giving, are you really living your life that way? Portland is a long way from L.A. A long way. Pop, what is this? It's a piano. Don't you know anything about music? <laughs> I know it's a piano. And why bother to ask? Oh, hold it, hold it while I try to figure out where it goes. Grandpa, what's all this about? That's a good question. Two hours ago, you go out for a little jog and you come back with the Portland Symphony. <laughs> it's for Ruthie. Put it over there. It's for me? That's right. One woman in every family should play the piano. You're going to play the violin. You got a gypsy look. You want to Madame Diane to read your poem? Sure. And while you're at it, see if you can tell me what this is all about. Yesterday, Ruthie mentioned that she was interested in music. Two days ago, she said she wanted to jump out of an airplane. Hope you didn't buy her a parachute. <laughs> you don't want to deprive your daughter of a musical education, do you, Lawrence? No, but I figured she could start with something simple, like humming. <laughs> Pop, how much is this piano costing you? Not costing me a penny. As soon as you sign that, it'll cost you $18 a month. <laughs> $18 a month? Pop, you can't just decide to give my daughter piano lessons and then show up with a piano that I have to pay for. You're not paying for it. You're renting it. <laughs> you know where I can rent another father? piano lessons honest all right ruthie that's fine if you're serious but you have to be serious because piano lessons cost money i'll study every day i promise you hear that son the girl's got her little heart set on it sign the man's paper please pop <laughs> next time you go jogging do it in the hall will you where they don't sell anything stop <laughs> racing your motor it's not for me it's for your daughter thank you this dollar is for you Invest it wisely. <laughs> I'll buy gold. <laughs> Pop, I'd like to see you in my room. <laughs> She's going to improve, Lawrence. She gets her first lesson in a few minutes. A few minutes? I hope my fingers are ready. I hope my ears are ready. Wait a minute. You arranged for a piano teacher, too? Grass doesn't grow under my piano. That old Coot Vandervelen will be here in a few minutes. Vandervelen? Grandpa, he's the most hated man in the building. She's right. When he moved in, he threw the welcome wagon lady down the stairs. <laughs> we don't have to adopt him. We just want him to give Ruthie piano lessons. Oh, I feel sorry for Mr. Vandervelen. I mean, maybe down deep inside, he's very nice. I mean, maybe he's lonely and giving me piano lessons will give him something to do. Sweet girl. She's too sensitive for this family. <laughs> now, listen to me, Pop. Vandervelen is a nasty, vicious, bitter man. Yeah, he causes nothing but trouble wherever he goes, Grandpa. Rumors. All rumors. Started by people who met him. <laughs> listen, Pop. There are plenty of other piano teachers in Portland. Too late. We can't cancel Vandervelen. Well, why? You've already made a deal. You're paying him $3 a lesson. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, I saw a piano being moved in. Well, who's the lucky person who's going to accompany me? <laughs> Don't 
you like it, Mr. Walder? It's too good for these people. <laughs> Tommy, I'm going to take piano lessons from Mr. Vandervelen. Vandervelen? The werewolf of the fifth floor? <laughs> okay, Pop, you started all this. Now you're going to fix it. If Ruthie wants to take piano lessons, that's fine. But not with Vandervelen. And you're going to have to talk to him and tell him you made a mistake about the lessons. Okay. I don't mind knocking the pins out from under a poor old pathetic gentleman. After all, I know how it feels. Someday I'll be one myself. Boy, oh, don't play hearts and flowers with me, Pop. I'm wise to all your tricks. Poor old pathetic gentleman. Okay, okay. Oh, Mr. Danner, no, I'm sorry we kept you waiting. No problem. I started charging for this lesson the minute I knocked. Mr. Vandervelle and I think you know my father. Hello. We met near the garbage. <laughs> Quarter tone flat. Well, where's the pupil? Uh, she's right here. Doesn't he even say hello? Pop, would you take it easy? This is your old pal. The old pathetic gentleman, remember? <laughs> if there's one thing that burns me up, it's to stick my hand out and have somebody walk right past it. Hey, you! Don't you even say hello to people? I didn't want to waste a hello. Anybody that would rent a piano like that is going to be deaf. <laughs> Hold my coat, Lawrence. I'm going to straighten out a couple of his wrinkles. <laughs> when they get senile like this, they should be put in a home. Oh, okay, guys, now just cool, okay? Pop. Maestro Vandervelen is here by your request under a rather generous offer from the Larry Alder Foundation to give Ruthie a piano lesson. Then why doesn't he do it instead of standing there beating his gum? Let me warn you, Mr. Alder, I demand complete authority over my pupils. I teach with a ruler. If they don't practice, I break their little fingers. <laughs> if you break her little fingers, I'll break your little head. <laughs> Ah, if he's only kidding, you can tell by the twinkle in his eye, he's got a great sense of humor. If the home won't take him, try warm baths. <laughs> now you, stay put. You and Harry James, out. Okay, hey, Mr. Vandervelen. They don't go out tonight, there's a full moon. <laughs> well, what are you two hanging around for? It's my daughter's first lesson, I... Thought I'd watch? I never let anybody watch. You might learn something for nothing. <laughs> You're all heart. I hope not. <laughs> let me belt him just once. Uh, Pop, don't you? Okay, I'm going to go in my room. And we'll come back in a half hour or so and listen to Ruthie play the Warsaw Concerto. <laughs> you know, I, I can hardly wait to start. I bet you're a great teacher. Don't try to butter me up. <laughs> Have you ever had lessons before? No, sir. Good, and I don't have to undo any damage some moron taught you. <laughs> now, this is middle C. The major scale consists of two whole tones and a half tone, then three whole tones and a half tone. The half tones come between the three and four and the seven and eight. In the key of C, that's between the E and F and the B and C. In the key of G, it's between the B and C and the F sharp and the G. <laughs> the F sharp being the signature. Do you understand? No, sir. <laughs> Well, you're honest, but you're stupid. Here, play these five notes. <laughs> Who put you up to this? Can I try it again? I'll learn. How old are you? Fourteen. There's not enough time. You didn't even give me a chance, Mr. Vanderbilt. I mean, you said a bunch of stuff about half tones, three, four. You showed me once, and then you gave up. Giving up? is an art in itself. <laughs> well, like grandfather of yours, the ladies in your family shouldn't be playing pianos. They should be moving them. <laughs> you know, you're not being fair, Mr. Vandervelm. My father and my grandfather both want me to take piano lessons, and the least you can do is give me a chance. Oh, if there's anything in this world I hate, it's a kid with spunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, listen, Mr. Vandervelm. Everybody kept warning me about taking piano lessons from you, but I didn't listen. I was just trying to do you a favor. Now, do me another favor. You gotta play something. Play hopscotch. You know something? Everybody kept telling me how mean you are. Only I kept saying you weren't. Only you are. And I wouldn't take piano lessons from you if you were a Liberace. Only he's nice and he wouldn't tell a kid to go move pianos. Oh, took tamales. <laughs> I would like to get my money now, please. Your money? Uh -huh. You didn't teach me anything. What? Oh, wait a minute. Yes, you did. You taught me that I never want to see you again. Never! Tell your father I want it in cash. 
And he better hurry up or he's into overtime. <laughs> I'll wait right here. Oh! Oh, that was a short lesson. I hate Mr. Vanderveld. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> you know, he said all kinds of horrible things. He's a terrible old man. I just don't want to take lessons from him. Okay, honey. If you still want to take lessons, we'll get you a nice teacher. I'll get rid of Vanderveld. Don't worry about it. Okay, Vanderveld, you got my daughter all upset. Here's your money. Take it. I want you out of that chair and out of my house, okay? <laughs> hey, Vandervelen, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Vandervelen? <laughs> Vandervelen? Yeah, it's a apartment 2B. Uh no sir, I'm uh, I'm just a neighbor. Right. Thank you. Uh dad, is Mr. Vanderbellen gone? In a manner of speaking. Oh, Mr. Vanderbellen, listen, I I'm sorry I yelled at you, but it was only cuz you were acting so nasty Ruthie, now. Ruthie, honey, he can't hear you. Why not? Well, I'm afraid he's uh he passed away. Ruthie, I, I want you to go to your room, okay? Passed away like in dead? Yes. Uh, are you sure? I'm sure, honey. But, Dad, he can't be. I mean, he was just standing right there, and I was yelling at him. I mean, I, I even said I never want to see you again. Dad, I killed him! <laughs> no, no, no way, honey. I mean, he's, he's an old man. He probably had a heart attack. Well, but that's because I yelled at him. No, and honey, that's silly. It's like I said, he probably had a weak heart. That's all. But, Dad, you're not supposed to yell at somebody with a weak heart. Come. I'm a murderer. I mean, it's silly to blame yourself. Now, come on. We're going to go in my room and we're going to talk about it, okay? Well, maybe, maybe he's just sleeping, Dad. No, honey. Oh. Oh, hi, Renabella. Are you still here? <laughs> just, just jogged around the block a couple of times. You ought to try it sometime. Get the blood circulating in that mean old carcass of yours. <laughs> you know... I've been thinking, Vandervelen. Life's too short for old geezers like us to be fighting. What do you say? Okay, Vandervelen. As far as I'm concerned, you can drop dead. <laughs> so, do you uh, feel better now, honey? Yeah, I guess. I mean, he, he was an old man, and... Probably did have a bad heart. It was just his time to go. Okay? Okay. That's good. Oh, I killed him. <laughs> Honey, you didn't kill anybody. You just happened to be the last person to see him alive. But, Dad, it's so weird. I mean, a few minutes ago, he was standing right out there breathing and everything. And now he's sitting in some chair dead. I know, honey. Um, smarter people than you and I can't explain death. Now, I've, I've called the police, and they're sending an ambulance for him. Oh, but, Dad, we can't just leave him out there like that. He, well, if it'll make you feel better, I'll, I'll cover him up. Okay. All right. You'll be okay? Mm -hmm. All right. I love you. I love you. Dear Lord, in a few minutes, you're going to meet Mr. Vandervelen. <laughs> I hope. First, you won't, you won't like him, but I know you can find good in anybody, so please try. And Lord, tell him I didn't mean to yell at him. Well, old timer, I hope you don't mind flowers. <laughs> Tommy, will you quit following me around? You don't flatter yourself. I came to hear Ruthie play the piano. Maybe somebody in this family has some talent. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's my best sheet doing in Dad's chair. Mr. Vanderbilt? Tommy, he, he looks strange.
We should. He's dead. <laughs> dead? Yeah, dead, like in mackerel. <laughs> dead? Yeah. The way I see it, your old man must have got sore at him and knocked him off and hit him under the sheet. <laughs> Hysterical. This is my first party, too, but you don't see me coming unglued. <laughs> you got a dead friend yeah, in the chair, Mr. Walden. He's deader than a mackerel. <laughs> Look, um, th this just happened a little while ago. I called the police. I, I took off the sheet, and, and there he was. Dad, it's scary. He's deader than a mackerel. <laughs> Who yelled just now? Me. Don't look under the sheet, Grandpa. <laughs> this man is very badly deceased. <laughs> He's deceased than a mackerel. <laughs> Cut it out, will you, Tommy? <clears throat> Diane, honey, I I'm sorry about this, but, but these things happen. Now, I want you to go in and talk to your sister. She's in my room, and she thinks that she... Anyway, just go talk to your sister. She's in my room. I'll be right in. Well, I, uh, I guess I'll go home there, Mr. Alden. Yeah, um, tell me, uh, are you okay? Oh, sure. I've seen a corpse before. Of course, it was a goldfish. <laughs> it was deader than a mackerel. <laughs> well, Pop, this has been some day. You know, son, it doesn't bother me that Mr. Vandervellen went to his glory the way he did. When your time comes... Tip your hat and leave, I always say. How long is he going to sit there? Well, it's hard to say, Pop. He was a mean man. Maybe he won't leave till we pay him. Bye, Mr. Vandervellen. See you in a few years. Grandpa! Oh, don't worry, child. I'm in no hurry to see him again. Let's go and look through his things, see if he's got an next of kin. Well, it's, uh, it's all over, honey. Let's uh, try and forget it, okay? Okay. Dad, how old's Grandpa? Uh, 74. We've got to take good care of him, Dad. We will. Look, honey, I know this has been a traumatic experience, but just try and put it out of your mind, okay? Okay. I just don't think anybody should ever sit in that chair again. You mean I can't sit where he sat? Lord, I hope we didn't use our bathroom. Dad, how could you read a paper and drink coffee after what happened? Look, honey, I mean, I'm sorry the man died, but I, I can't be a hypocrite. He didn't like me and I didn't like him. So far as I can tell, he didn't like a living soul. Dad? What? What's going to happen to him now? I mean, suppose Diane and Grandpa don't find any sign of relatives. Well, then I guess the city will have to bury him. But they didn't even know him. Oh, can't we give him a funeral? Ruthie, do you know how much a funeral costs? Well, then we could have him cremated. And we could put his ashes right here up in the piano. <laughs> It'd be a great tribute to him, Dad. Ruthie, I don't want some crabby old man's ashes sitting on my piano. Do you mind getting up for a minute, Mr. Alder? What for? I want to take a picture of the death chair. <laughs> Dad, get him out of here. Tommy, um, you better go. Ruthie feels pretty badly about Mr. Vandervellen. Okay. Hey, uh, Ruthie, if it makes you feel any better, we all got to croak sometime. <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. I'm sure she feels much better now. Did you find anything? No. Oh, there's this box of letters he didn't mail yet. Shall I read them? Yeah. I bet he's a nice guy after all. Yeah, maybe you're right. Here's one to the Salvation Army. You see? He probably sent him money. Sirs, if one more of your beggars in a Santa Claus suit rings a bell in my face, I'll take you to court. <laughs> Here's one threatening to picket the city of hope. This one says he wants to get the federal government to abolish Mother's Day. 
Now, so much for the hidden heart of gold. I'm sorry, Ruthie. Yeah. Dad, do you think we could find out where they're going to bury him? I mean, the least I could do is bring him some flowers. Of course, that, that would be a nice gesture. Yeah, it's the least I can do for somebody I killed. I'll talk to the child. Pop, I'll, I'll handle it. Okay. Diane and I will run these love letters back upstairs. <laughs> Ruthie? You can explain to me about people dying? <sighs> Honey, one, one little talk can't do that. I can tell you how I feel about it. Um, you see, death is a part of living. At your age, it's a long way off. My age, it seems a little closer. And at Grandpa's age, well, you begin to accept it and it becomes a part of life. Dad, don't talk that way about you and Grandpa. I don't even want to think about that. I don't think I've been this sad in my whole life. Sweetie, I don't think you're sad at all. What? I think you're in shock. But you've never been around anything like this. And, and I think you really believe that you caused it. But I don't think you feel any real grief. How could you say such a terrible thing? I feel rotten. Well, sure you do. But haven't you noticed something? No, what? Honey, you haven't cried once. You don't have to cry to feel awful. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, there, uh, there certainly are no rules about that. Um, here's, uh, here's my high school annual. It uh, belongs in the basement. I just, I just never got around to it. Uh, ah, this uh, here is my junior class. Boy, what weird-looking kids. Hey, before you say a thing like that, remember, I've seen your class. You see this uh, pretty blonde? <laughs> she actually wore that outfit to school. Hey, never mind the outfit. Just look at the face. She's pretty. Yeah. She died before we graduated. She died? Yep. Honey, the, the point is... Um, Hardly any of us knew her, but she got sick, and the next thing we knew, she was dead. The whole school was in shock, but very few of us actually cried. You think that's the way I am, huh, Dad? Right. I mean, the first time somebody that you know dies, it's a very dramatic thing. I mean, it's, it's almost fascinating because it seems so wrong. Dad? Hmm? Isn't anybody going to cry for Mr. Vandervelen? Maybe, honey. Somebody somewhere, I'm sure, cares. This is the chair where the old guy died. He hated me and my trumpet. But I figure somebody ought to say goodbye to him. Okay? Okay, Tommy. Uh -huh. 